It's canned, it doesn't need refrigeration, and it's pink. When you taste it, you'll have a mouth-watering masterpiece. It looks like something from a dystopian sci-fi movie. But don't be afraid, it's just spam. And its ingredients are pretty simple. You can eat it straight from the can, <laughs> sizzle it, and even make whole meals from Spam. If you've never tried it, it tastes like salted ham. It is powerfully salty. And has the consistency of a spongy sausage patty. But how did this highly processed food become a staple? And why is it related to American soldiers? Asia Pacific, Monty Python, and a cooking festival. We'll have the answers later in this episode. Spam first hit grocery store shelves in 1937. Jay Hormel, the president of Hormel Foods Corporation, invented it to sell then undesirable pork shoulders to Americans. The original recipe is pretty simple. Ground pork shoulder meat gets mixed with salt, water, sugar, and sodium nitrate. Then, the ingredients are vacuum sealed and cooked in cans. What SPAM stands for is debated. Some people have speculated that SPAM stands for shoulder of pork and ham. Interesting. But Hormel claimed it's a combination of the words spice and ham, even though neither ingredient appeared in the original recipe. It attracted the attention of the U.S. government during World War II. It was filling, cheap, and didn't need refrigeration. Perfect for feeding troops. And soldiers didn't just eat the stuff, they also used its grease to lubricate their guns. Done, drill sergeant! But they grew sick of eating canned meat every day, so they refused to eat it once they got back home. Hormel even received hate mail from American soldiers. And at the time, he couldn't get rid of the <clears throat> spam mail. Oh, come on! But let's talk about this later. To boost sales after World War II, Hormel formed a musical group of 60 female veterans. The Hormel girls traveled around the U.S. to sell canned pork door to door. And it was a huge success. By the 1960s, Spam had become a convenient product that appealed to women who had joined the workforce. But Spam also became a staple food outside of America. Because of the presence of American troops, it entered the food cultures of England and Asia Pacific. It's a popular breakfast meal in the Philippines, and South Koreans even offer Spam products in fancy gift boxes for the Lunar New Year. Japanese immigrants in Hawaii invented Spam Musubi, which binds a slice of cooked Spam to rice with dried seaweed strips. It's now become an easy, on-the-go snack. But in the 1970s, a Monty Python comedy sketch made fun of Spam. I don't like Spam! The Hormel product became a joke in England and mainland US. That's how the word Spam started to mean unwanted mail, just like Spam products represented unwanted meats. To face the backlash, Hormel used more advertising. Austin, Texas held a cooking festival called Spamarama from 1978 to 2007. It resumed in 2019. Today, Spam is more than a canned protein. Now you can find a dozen different flavors of Spam. Would you rather have the teriyaki flavor or the jalapeno one? It's also made its way into fancy restaurants in New York City and Los Angeles. Chefs serve Spam with more expensive food, such as Carolina gold rice or foie gras. Spam is now seen as a nod to fusion food and nostalgia. So why not try a bite? Okay, Spam. Spam isn't the only cheap food popularized due to World War II. Instant ramen was created then, but it didn't start as a cheap meal. How did it go from a luxury item to a staple of college dorms? Three for a dollar. We'll see that story in another episode of Origins of Food.